the one in front of The microphone. Should be fine. Testing one, two, three. Yes, it's good. You can hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, my name is uh, Ronnie Ephraim from uh, Mellanox, and I have with me uh, Or Gerlitz, also from Mellanox. Um, and we want to talk about uh, container and especially how to accelerate uh, the networking uh, for containers. So I will start and describe what the, what, how can you connect a, con a container to the network today. Um, <laughs> Just want to see your stuff. <laughs> Okay, so of course we have a proprietary connections of uh, sockets, but we are more interesting in uh, uh, networking, uh, like real networking stuff. Uh, so of course we have uh, an OVS that can do a, a bridging. We can ha have a Linux bridge. Um, we can either take a, a, a an entire NIC and give it to a container. Or the other thing that we're working most, I think most of the customers are working today with a Mac VLAN and a IP VLAN. Um, currently today the Mac VLAN can have acceleration of uh, uh, in order to have a, a queue per, uh, per Mac VLAN and Yes, this is John's VMDQ, uh, right. uh, the how accelerated Mac VLAN. So it's something that is already uh, we have today, and uh, we also have the. Mm, don't remember the name was. It's, it's a civil networking cryptograph yeah. and co company that uses uh, BPF um, and I guess VTH to to do all the provisioning for containers. And uh, as you can. Can understand some of them are manageable and some of them are not. Uh, the Mac VLAN, the IP VLAN are not manageable. It's like a, a standard switch. You can set this is the Mac and the VLAN, and you don't have any object that you can manage in the uh, default uh, namespace. Why are you laughing? That's a feature. What? The lack of manageability. Plug and play, right? Yes, but I think when we say manageable, we, we mean that th there's a question. You, you give a, a container uh, some interface to interact with networking. So, so the question is, w once you do that, does this interface completely disappear from the hypervisor? Or you have, like, like in a switch case, you have some representation of what you gave them, so you can query statistics, you can monitor them. So if you give them a Mac VLAN and you don't see it anymore on your side of the namespace of the hypervisor, it's problematic. We believe, in a way. Let's say you want to just do the statistics they are running now. So how how, how would you can always run like IP dash namespace. You, you can run IP dash namespace and get right. the statistics that way. Yeah, but right? that's that's to get statistics. But if you want to like to have an ACL, so where do you program the ACL? If if they are allowed to program the ACL, it's bad. And so if you have the representation of whether you gave them, you can. We'll get there. Okay. So if you think like a switch, like a managed switch, so you have the the two part of the of the link. You have the part that is you give the virtual the the container, and this is the and, and the device, of course. And you have the other part of the of the wire that. If it's unmanaged, so you don't have, you don't see, the, you don't have a representation for it. But if you if you want to manage this port, you need to have a representation for it, and and then you can try to do things. You can, of course, you can read counters, but you can do all the ACLs. You can do a bunch of things that you can you can do in port, but you need someone to point on. That's, I want to do something to this channel. 
But in order to do that, you must have to have a representation in the default domain. That's, that's the most uh, different, I think, between uh, Mac VLAN and when you're working with a bridge. If it's a, it's a Linux bridge or, uh, or OVS bridge or other kind of uh, something that's do bridging because you can see, you can have a part of it also in the default domain. So, I think, and when we do hard, when we want to have hardware acceleration, I think that's the same issue that we had with SRIOV. We have a virtual function, we give the virtual function to the VM, and you can't, and the management for this model, like, was something that we, we, we did, but it was very limited. So you had the, the IP link WAF set, so you can set specific uh, attribute on this uh, virtual function. And we noticed that we are lacking uh, many things that we want to do. So uh, that's the idea we change in the SRIOV, that we have a representation for this uh, virtual function in the hypervisor. So, 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 so Ronnie, I think we have maybe, uh, it's above, so maybe two p points we want to put on the table now. So one is that uh, today you have like many different ways to approach a container. Uh, Mac VLAN in Google, you did the IP VLAN, and uh, uh, Thomas and, and other people use the v, VTH. So um, that's one one domain of the problem that there are multiple ways to do that. So if you want to accelerate, what you're going to do? Do you accelerate all of them, or you do something else, which is maybe Intel driver or Melon's driver that does acceleration? Uh, and another question: What do people think that uh, the methods which have representations? for the default namespace are, are indeed um, the direction to go to. So, right, right, Ronnie, that's maybe two questions that yeah. we put here. Jamal, you came late as usual, but that's, so, it's so, also we'll have to have, we're happy to have your, your feedback. So, so I think one thing to consider is just because an interface is in a child namespace doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give that child namespace the ability to arbitrarily configure it. So you could have an IP VLAN interface where root in that namespace can't change things on it, right? So you okay. need to be root in the default namespace too. So that's the network, uh, uh, how do you call it, ADM? Uh, I'm, not capabilities. Sure. I'm not sure if this is implemented, but like that's one approach, but it, right? It uh, it's, does someone know? I, think, I believe it is implemented, no, guys? Um. No, it, you can. If you have root, there's other ways to do it as well. You can buy mount the, uh, the network namespace and manipulate it that way. So, a con so if a container is handed an interface, they can do whatever they want? No, the complete opposite. Ah, okay, got gotcha. got them it. from even knowing it's there. So, so they, they could, for instance, they cannot set up a TC rule? Correct. Ah, good. But so, do we want to limit the, the co a container that's that the container can't do any things on his networking? No, I think I think that's probably container security is almost an oxymoron. So <laughs> you can you can uh, <clears throat> you can go in the host, bind mount, enter it as IP net NS, and do whatever the hell you want. If you're coming from the host, yes. No, that's but you're the you oh, But uh, as Mike was saying, if if let's say run, don't want to use the word <laughs> Docker, but let's say use Docker and you. Cut, you limit the uh, ad net ad admin. You don't give access to net admin, then yes, they can't do it, anything. Okay, so uh, uh, but I think a, a better solution will be that it will be limited to the where is the switch is located. The switch is not in the container. The switch is inside the, the default domain. So yes, but the default name. Sorry, sorry. so. The configuration need to come from there because think like a, a top of rack switch. Where you do your configuration, you don't do it on the server. You do the configuration in, on the top of switch. Depends. So, yes. Right. Uh, so. So for something like IP VLAN, there's kind of the low, low level configuration and the high level configuration. And the high level configuration is something that people in the namespace should be able to change, like add and remove IP addresses. And then kind of the low level configuration is kind of the, the stuff that they shouldn't be able to change, right? 
And, and, and I think that's the natural way to split things out. I don't think this is currently done. And so this is not supported, what you said? I don't know. I don't think it is. Mm. But so I, I, so um, at this moment, the L3 mode in IPvLAN does something similar. So all you can have, all you, all you can have is the IP address assigned. And there are those uh, things which were planned. I mean, obviously, if people ask, that will get implemented. But uh, uh, all the controls are in the default namespace. All the policies that you apply, all the IP, <coughs> IP tables or uh, rules that you apply, are in default namespace that you can put it for the child namespace. So it's it's kind of a secure model. Uh, um, I, I, should, I, I shouldn't say secure model. It's like a control model. And you have to couple that with your user namespace so that the admin privileges and uh, um, the root privilege for the user who is running inside the namespace are controlled. OK. So the question is, do we need to have uh, things that we want to allow to do only from the default namespace? I, I think that we do. Yes. <laughs> so in order to, the, 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 my first question was, do we need a representation for a IP or Mac VLAN also in the default domain? That's. Uh, absolutely. I mean, Mark Villan is held to debug, so anything that will give access to yes. his details so, from so, the host so, uh, is useful. Yeah, I think at least we, we, we agree with you, but Jamal, what, what the, the point, there's, there's a, the, the, pro, the problem of the... <laughs> so I know that Google, they use a lot of IP VLAN, they, uh, and they contributed and then came to conference. And So people use IP VLAN, other people use Mac VLAN, other use, people use VTH. So. So what do we do, have to do now? We have to do uh, hardware offload to all of them, or, no, or a presentation yeah, I, for all of them, or so no, we should no, start no. with MacVillan and take so, it all so from there. But you're jumping to the next question. Yes, excuse me. Before hardware offload, excuse so me. So then I want to conclude this. Uh, yes, 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 excuse me. Do we agree that we need, any, anybody thinks that we don't need to have a representation for this port in the default domain, default namespace? I think that's it's you. It's just a waste to have it. Um, um, but if it's a Mac VLAN and IP VLAN, um, there's already already a software semantic that goes along with them. Do you really need to do additional uh, management on it at that point? Uh, could be that in Mac VLAN you don't you don't need to. Because currently you're not supporting anything that's behind this Mac VLAN. But if you want to have an ACL on this Mac VLAN? But how do you do that today? Today you have the Mac VLAN and then you assign a, a TC filter or something to it. But, uh, and, and then you put the object, I mean, the container itself can already do this, right? Yeah, but you let the container now manage this. Uh, but that's the current semantics we have of Mac VLAN and IP VLAN today. Yeah, and if you want to do the to to, uh, to do it inside the the default namespace, how you can yeah. do it? You can't today, even with software. That's, so. that's the problem. I, I and Jamal uh, Jamal is spending, spending the ass. For, uh, I mean, he has uh, other people. So, so, do we agree that, mm, or we don't? That uh, I'm I'm just pointing out that I think that you are changing the semantics from the existing software interface as well. So it's why right. right. if you do representation to something, it doesn't mean you change your semantic. They even that they don't know that you did that. So. I th John, you're not talking about Mac VLAN, you're talking about the other, the IP VLAN and which are you referring as being changed in semantics? So today if you create a Mac VLAN device and you assign that device to a namespace, right? right? The namespace can add uh, IP filters and sure. NetTC and QDisks yeah. and all sorts of things to it. You don't have a way from the host to, to yeah, you, add it to the Mac you VLAN. You don't have a way from the host, that's true. That? Way, you're right. That, however, is, is that what you're saying is changing semantics? Yeah, that's just what I'm saying. I'm just making the observation that yeah. it's different than it is today. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's bad or good or that it shouldn't be done. I'm just no, so pointing out that there's a change in how software. So you view that we should that should still be allowed, but do you have an issue with uh, a mode where that's not allowed? Um, I, I don't think I have an issue with it either way. I'm, I'm just pointing out that that today you don't have a way to do this in software either. I think. 
And yeah. Alex is going to say something. Yeah? Yes, but this is not secured. That's a problem. Well, see, the way I see it, the problem is it's creating a new hybrid that's almost a VETH and almost Mac VLAN, but not really either. Because <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken with your VF port representer then, what we had now have is I can transmit into that VF port representer and it's going to be an alternate path that the host will have to remember to go from there into the... Uh, Actually, no, it's going to create a new route because with Mac VLAN, you can't hairpin, can you? Or is, is, okay. So, yeah. So, basically, it creates like uh, an automatic hairpin interface for us to now turn around on, which is going to be confusing. Well, I guess to, eh, maybe not. I don't know. This, this is where it starts getting confusing is, yeah. Uh, right. Because we end up with the PF or whatever the interface was you created the Mac VLAN on is going to be was originally capable of doing hairpin. Now you have this extra interface that's going to require a hairpin that's going to be sitting up on your switch somewhere. And so it, it really must This can be an advantage if we have a, I believe, Jerry Perko from Nox presented it in the, in the previous NetConf, NetConf, not NetDev, and his presentation is uh, under. So if you have a unified model for switching for both containers and SRO. We, 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 we absolutely, without a doubt, need a way to debug this thing, and we can't today. Right. Once it's, ex it's hidden into the container, there's no way I can figure out what, why something got dropped, what's in there. Now, uh, probably is the, as a port on the host, maybe the best way to do that. So, uh, I think both the models are required. One is like secured container and unsecured container kind of thing. So that in a secure container, um, oh, sorry, not secure, trusted container versus untrusted container, where you can say, Every, everything is allowed inside the container and in an untrusted container, uh, if the other things are taken care, you can allow uh, applying policies in the default namespace and not allow inside the namespace. Yeah, I, I think what this comes down to is this isn't really IP VLAN or MAC VLAN, this is hardware accelerated VE is what it seems like. No, but the question, before we go to the hardware accelerated, we, we wanted... Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe we have to go there because the time is. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so we try to we actually thinking. see if we have grounds and things. I, I think VF is the wrong way to look at it because VF gives you a pair of devices and then kind of packets come out of the other side and you have to do something with them, route them or something. What you kind of are really looking at is more like a bonding interface style where you you create a Mac VLAN device, you leave it in the default namespace, and then you kind of bond a device on top of that Mac VLAN and move the bond into the into the child namespace. And then you kind of have the, same, the best of both worlds. You've got an interface inside of the namespace that you can manage from within the namespace, set up anything you want there. But you also kind of have the interface in the default namespace where you could potentially add filters and so rules and why you need a bond? Yes, at least for me, bonding is the same yeah, Because you want that switch direct device-to-device -device tie that I'm not I don't really see how else you can get that. I like. I mean, clearly, bond isn't entirely yeah. the right approach either, right? <laughs> but but like, if if you do it with a VF pair, then you end up. Well, I guess you could bridge Mac VLAN with VEF and then move the other side of VEF into the namespace, do something like that. But you kind of need this way to 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 have like something on top. You, you basically need a way to kind of split the interface into an upper level and a lower level, and right. move the upper level into the child yeah. namespace. So the, present, the representation is the lower level. It's the, the switch port. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. Um, so, just one more comment. I mean, it doesn't have to be a port. We need a way to have visibility into what's going it's on. It's Jerry's slide. Yeah, oh, you have it. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'll go back. So, so actually, kind of going back, there's actually a, a, an annoyance I've always had with, with both bridge and bonding that the slave interfaces to bridge and bonding aren't really full-blown interfaces and they shouldn't show up as full-blown interfaces. They should show up as just bottom half interfaces. Just, just go, go back one slide, so yes, I haven't seen that. So this is on the right, no. On the right side is Jiri's uh, slides, right? Uh, from Netcon. This is the representation for the, uh, yes, that's, that's the representation, yeah, that's, that's the slides from NetConf, that's NetConf that Jiri showed, a representation model for uh, power virtualization or for uh, containers. Yes. So you have, you have the switch port and you have the part that you're giving to the container. 
point is it's not that good. That doesn't right. yeah. It's it's kind of a, a switch uh, and the end of and the server on the other side, yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing with the, the value of doing this. I, I just wanted to point out that it's not Mac VLAN, and we've previously made lots of statements about keeping software um, kind of semantics the yeah, same. So, okay, we need to solve the visibility problem. If it's being exposed as a port representer or some other scheme, and I, I think I see value in being able to control TC or, or routes, oh, sorry, whatever that's port-based from the host, because typically uh, the owner of the container sits on the host and yes. the, at least the control of the, of the container. But, but John, uh, I, again, <laughs> just last time. So th this, uh, this uh, architecture of the jury we are proposing is actually a unifying model. So if, if you have, when you have virtualization, your server becomes top of the rack, switch, they, they switch between containers, between VM, between I don't know what. So wouldn't it be good to have some sort of unified model to the switching? Sure. So, no, because you say, hey, you change the semantics of, so we enhance it, you know. Users are using Mac VLAN today, right? And if you, if all of a sudden the way that Mac VLAN devices are managed changes, that uh, is a change and we should, you know, I don't know. acknowledge it. In this way, definitely, I think what we did a couple of years ago was in, excuse me, a mistake, the, what we call today the legacy mode. <laughs> and both of us were heavily involved in that, so I believe uh, the switch is, I'm, not, I'm biased, of course, but, uh, but, but here, uh, again. So, so uh, um, a couple years back, I proposed a series of patches that allowed you from IP link to say, add switch port type, something like this, and you tell it how many queues it needs and stuff like this, and it would create a net dev. And that NetDev was the sort of management front back end for all this kind of stuff. They were rejected and the suggestion was to use something like Mac VLAN because there's already an existing infrastructure around it. And, um, and I think that works fairly well, but the problem here is you're pointing out that is if you don't trust your container, then how do you install rules and filters and stuff on it? So maybe it's worth revisiting this idea of having, a, a, I think that's what you're suggesting as well, is yep. that there's a management port behind it. So. So uh, it doesn't even have to be a management port as long as you can control it through some interface. Port always looks like the easy thing to do. It's the most natural, I guess. Okay. Okay. So I think we're familiar with what can do with a virtual function, but uh, and the easy implementation could be just probe the virtual function into the, the host, and you can give the, each of them for a container, and you have a kind of solution. But uh, this solution is limited because currently you can't have uh, 10,000 virtual functions for NIC, but we can have 10,000 or even more of rings, of queues in, the, in, a, in a single NIC. And I think what we want to do is to give each container um, a dedicated queue that is managed by the hardware, not, of course, we are, we are talking about the acceleration it, with hardware, it can do, of course, by software, but if we want to accelerate it with hardware, so it means that uh, every uh, container will get uh, a, a dedicated queue from the hardware that can do, a, all the things that a, a NIC can do. It can do, um, it can do TSO, it can do RSS, it can do, um, we can do, run ACLs on this uh, particular link. And many things that we can do, and I think that look like proprietary things. That's not proprietary, but it's proprietary implementation. And when I'm looking on it, I see a, a vendor driver, as John said, that's what he thought is also in the beginning. So it looks like it's a proprietary driver, it's a, proprietary. it's a vendor driver, a very tight, a tight a very small one, that uh, every vendor can, can implement for his card, like a virtual function driver, a virtual function uh, driver, and that is 
creating on the fly with an IP, IP link add command. And when you create the, the port, that's the net device that you give to the container, you also can create the other part of it, like a, like a VETH that you have two ports, one you give to the container and one you leave in the host, and you can connect it to a bridge. So we can have the same intelligent here, and then you can, can control the forwarding with, with, if we want to do it with a, a Linux bridge, with an OVS, with a, just by TC, or everything that's, we want to manage how we're forwarding the traffic. Not like, just to say, every Mac, Mac villain like this go to this port. So we can manage it with, by TC or by any matter, any way that we think is good too. Are you, what's your thought about it? I don't think we're following. So I'd like to reiterate the question. So, uh, so uh, one, wait, wait, so there, there's some richness in hardware offloads that can be uh, applied to containers. You know, they are like the, what Tom was listing, the five conventional uh, offloads of checksums and TSO, RSS and stuff. So uh, uh, you can come with a, a 50 kilogram hammer and say, okay, I'm gonna assign a, a virtual function to each container, but this is not scannable and not usable for many people. So you would, but you still, uh, modern mix have uh, thousands or tens of thousands or millions of rings. So you can assign rings, how to rings to container. And there's today John's uh, Mac offloaded, how to accelerated Mac villain that some people call VMDQ. You can create today uh, a Mac villain device, which already essentially uses some ring on the driver that are assigned to this container. But the question we try to pose here, if we want to go beyond the uh, dedicated rings, we want to use uh, all, the, all this basic hardware stuff, um, do we uh, want to do um, um, that each vendor will uh, extend their driver, Intel or Melox will extend our driver, that you'll be able to create an instance of MLX5 of, or I40E that goes to this container or do we want to stick to John's approach of um, I, I think we already talked about this and there's a limit in the API right now that just needs to be fixed and then you can do whatever you want. Um, Which, which API? The Mac VLAN API. If, you, if the Mac VLAN API passes an opaque pointer to the driver instead of a Q index. Yes, but that's, um, uh, yeah, I got it. You, you're fixing the uh, things. But yes, but, but so you say if we fix this detail, you that, prefer to stick to the count approach? No, if you fix that detail, then I40E will start allocating VSIs for, um, for these containers, and then the VSIs are the same unit of driver. Um, yes, but this VSI is your hardware construct. You still want to expose it to a container in the form of Mark Villain? Or you want an yes. I40E instance to go there? Just no, the, in, in the form of Mac Newman. You uh, prefer this approach? I think so, yeah. It's, I mean, it's basically... And, and, you, and you believe it's fully... Uh, you'll be able to use everything? It's just yeah. a net to have. You can say, I want four queues, and then as long as we get the, this API, which is an internal API, by the way, as long as we get that <laughs> internal API correct, yep. then the drivers should know how to do RSS and TSO and... And yeah, I mean, then it's just a matter of it making sure that Mac VLAN passes the controls through down yes. to the PF correctly to allow these kind of uh, yes. transitions or control to happen, right? Yes. Uh, I, I also I also tend to like the um, the general uh, approach, but again, I'm, I'm less familiar with IP VLAN stuff that Google or what Thomas is not here. So the question is. I want to be addressing only the Mac villain case and we're neglecting other cases. See, my concern with this is that it seems like it's going to break the standard Mac VLAN case in favor of this pseudo VETH pair because a lot of the behavior is going to change. You set up rules currently on the Mac VLAN in software and it passes it down to the PF. Now you've got this completely different setup. So if someone sets up something in software which right now the case that you're having problems with is because I40E works a very specific way, very similar to this, so you can't spawn VSIs right now because it creates the same MAC address on the PF that it would have for the MAC VLAN. But now the behavior changes because this device has the ability to set up completely separate rules on each MAC VLAN that if you don't have this hardware and this variation on the driver, all of a sudden the software fallback doesn't match with what the uh, expectations are for the driver. <coughs> So really, I think what this is, in the grand scheme of things, this is much more of a 
you know, it ends up being essentially separate net devs that you're spawning, not necessarily Mac VLANs. Yeah, it's right. It's, it's, it's a new net dev, right. Right. So, like, that's kind of the problem I have with calling this even Mac VLAN, because at this point, this thing will be able to support, I'm assuming, multiple unicast and multiple multicast addresses, theoretically. Right. Do I have that right? Yeah. And whereas uh, software Mac VLAN supports one, and it basically inherits all the Mac addresses of the PF. There ends up being a ton of behaviors that will change between the two. And I really think it opens us up to a ton of regressions when you look at the software interface versus what this hardware interface would be capable of. If anything, I think it would hamstring them if they try to stick to this is Mac VLAN versus you know this is hardware accelerated VETH or whatever else you want to call it. XDP EBPF VLAN? <laughs> So, I don't know, really, I mean, that, that implements everything on that list with the uh, exception of QoS. Everything else can be done as XDP and EBPF with, sorry? I said everything except for QoS. It, it does everything on that list except for QoS, and then it's just a matter of offloading that EBPF into the NIC, right? So, so really the data structure that holds all the information for all this configuration is the net dev struct, right? So we need a new, uh, some layer, driver layer, or a new abstraction that does a net dev creation. It's, you know, it's basically the MDQ2, well, uh, right? There's a lot of things that do net dev creation. Like VLANs create net devs. I understand, but do they allow you to configure the net dev in such a way that the hardware will have, um, <laughs> that the hardware will have uh, the ability to react to configuration changes so that the PF driver gets noticed that the, that, that's the problem with Mac VLAN even today, right? That's why I said you'd have to pass through the right um, configuration commands down to the PF so that, so that things, the changes could be made for configuration. I'm, I'm just wondering if we just need to create a new, uh, you know, one of the, a new virtual driver that would represent this kind of thing in a sane manner and not break all the existing usages. So Mac VLAN 2? Yeah, ish. Or, or, or you make the default not do this. Again, like we have legacy in this or every case. Yeah, if you, yeah. if you just, if someone has to go out of their way to configure it so it does this, then that's probably also okay, no? Because if nothing else, we could just call it like a switch dev VETH pair. Because that's essentially what this is. It's going to be, you have some interface that goes into the container, which is usually your other end of the VETH pair, and the one that's represented on the switch dev. And so we want to have control on the host side VETH portion of this. And then the uh, client side should have no control over much of anything. I would say slightly different than calling it VETH because <clears throat> you may not have to pass packets between the control between the host and the container, correct? Right. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you do it. Uh, yes, it's not a VETH. How awful for it? Yeah. Well, then how are you going to control? Like you were talking about setting up ACLs. How are you going to set up ACLs on this interface without a switch dev port representing it? Uh, TC. Oh right, but TC on what? You have to have a switch dev port that represents it. Yeah, and if I decide to put packets into that switch dev port, where do they go? They g They're going to get delivered to the other end of the pipe. So right. therefore, this has to be set up like VETH because you're going to have to have a port that you can represent that you can transmit packets on. Otherwise, you break the whole switch dev concept. Because if, if you have an upper level switch that decides, oh, I've got to handle this packet by sending it to the other device, you have to be able to transmit on the port. So that's why in my mind this is VETH with a switch dev aspect to it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to cook it. I, I think what we need for this to do is to have control and visibility into the Mac VLAN, right? Or whatever you want to call it, Mac VLAN 2. Not necessarily to pass packets. We need a control thing, well, no, not have, necessarily that's, that's a device. That's a requirement for switch dev. If it's they right. want to use this in switch dev, if they want to use this in switch dev, they have to be able to pass packets to that interface. Because if they have a switch rule that's not set up, they have to be able to pass it to the host and have the host get the packet back to the destination. But which, yeah. which part of the interface? The one that sits in the container on the host? On the host. So the host has to have an interface if you're running with switch dev. So you can have, are, are you, you've seen the VF port representer stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it ends up being the equivalent of that. In this case, it'll be like a... Uh, Here, it's, it's on the chart. You yeah. can see. Yes, Alex is right, Jamal. If we go to this full-blown concept, we have to obey this requirement. Maybe, yeah. maybe as you say that your needs are less than that, and we can... Yeah, my needs are less than that. Yeah, I, okay, so... The only uh, problem I have, I love Mac Villa. It just held to debug, that's all. So we should... Yeah, but if you want to run an open switch on that, 
So you do need the requirement to forward those. So packets. I think we're, uh, we're hitting this case again where um, we have a tension between explicitly saying we're doing something that's offloading and transparently doing something that's offloading. And when we did Mac VLAN, the intent was to have it be completely transparent. You didn't have to know that you were doing any sort of switch dev or offload, and libvert continues to work. And um, there's no need to change your model because you're doing offloading. In this case, we're saying your model changes slightly when you're doing offloading. And I, I think that's worth noting. I don't think it's a showstopper, but um, this group has in the past been quite opposed to changing models for offloading. Um, this might be a case where it's valid, but just to so note, I don't think, I, I really think we should probably not use MacVLAN because MacVLAN has an existing offload. It's transparent. We have people using it with libvert and it works. My concern is if we change it, it A, doesn't really seem to solve all these things and then B, it seems to break what we have working already in production. I, I would so. just have been happy with a command that would have told me that the Mac VLAN is inside a container, what the Mac address is, how many packets were seen and received, that, that would have been more than enough. That's, that's the representative device. Sorry. Yeah, but if, I, if I'm going to need a representative device, then, <laughs> then I think maybe we should call it something else. Okay, so we'll, okay. we'll continue. Uh, okay, well, so we're, yeah, I think we're going to sign like what we had yeah. for okay. SRIOV before, where you just have a list in the IP link, uh, call it like IP link or something like that and get a list of interfaces that were active. That's kind of like what we had for SRIOV initially. So that's probably all you're really looking for would be something like that in this case. Good. Good. Uh, thank you very much.